Now we're going to start looking at an animal cell, but before we do, I wanted to show you this image that kind of helps you visualize scale. Super important to look at the scale of this image. It's actually a logarithmic scale. So if you look down here, it tells you that it isn't a linear scale, which means each point on this diagram is 10 times different magnitude than the point next to it. So if you look at um, this line per chance, this is where we have a bacterium and the bacterium is a protist. I mean, the bacterium is a prokaryote. Hmm, write that down so that you make sure the words get really similar, don't they? And so if it's a confusing one for you, put it into a flashcard and review it. Um, but you can see that the size of a bacterium compared to, I mean, it's almost, almost one and a half size jumps on this scale, which means it's like, I don't know, 500 times as big. It isn't just twice as big. It's a multiple of 10 times as big, maybe 150 times as big. I need my kid to explain to me how much bigger a bacterium, I mean, an animal and plant cell, a eukaryote is compared to our prokaryotes given this um, scale. My point in telling you that is just that, whoa, eukaryotes are much, much, much bigger than prokaryotes. And having that scale in your head when we look at these cells, I think will be helpful. We're gonna start with the animal cell and just label this one right here. And again, I'm gonna give you the organelles, the names of the parts. I'm gonna give you some information about these cells. And then we're gonna see these structures again when we look at the plant cell. And then we're going to see some of the structures again when we look at the uh, protist. First, and I don't know about you, but I would argue perhaps most important is the cell membrane. It is also called a plasma membrane. And I don't, does anybody remember what it's made out of? I'm going to give you some hints. And not only am I giving you hints, I'm going to tell you we're going to spend an entire lecture. The next lecture is all on the cell membrane. The whole lecture is just on the cell membrane. So the cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer. All, those are my little phospholipids there. And so if we blew up this circle around our cell, we would see two layers of phospholipids hanging out in there. There are a whole bunch of membrane bound organelles. I'm going to make all the membrane bound organelles purple. Membrane bound organelles. And I'm going to just list them out here and you tell me are we going to find any of these guys in our protist? I mean, our prokaryote, I did it again. Not a protist. Protists have all this stuff, but they do not. But who doesn't have all this stuff? The prokaryote. Okay, let's be super clear. We can do this. No, <laughs> I don't even know if I answered my question. Prokaryotes do not have membrane bound organelles. So this pile, you aren't, aren't gonna find in our prokaryote. Do they have a cell membrane? Pff, yeah, they totally do. Okay, let's see if we can find some. This thing, if I had a favorite organelle, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to say it's this guy. This is the mitochondria. Mitochondria is plural, mitochondrion is singular. I just want to show you, look at the size of a mitochondrion compared to a bacterium. That's a hint, an interesting 
um, idea about where eukaryotes came from, mitochondria are very similar in size to bacteria. Mitochondria are responsible for energy production. And we will spend an entire, I want to say three, okay, one, but three all combined lectures on how mitochondria function. There's, okay, yeah, my favorite. Um, also in here, let's see, I see some cytoskeleton. Let's do, wait, let's do all our membrane bound organelles first. So uh, I see this stuff. Do you see this? Some, it looks almost like, well, they look like squiggles, don't they? And it looks like light gray squiggles and it looks like dotted squiggles. These are, this is sarco, um, endoplasmic reticulum. And we have two flavors, rough and smooth. Rough, which one's which? The dotted one is rough endoplasmic reticulum and it's covered with ribosomes. Covered with ribosomes, which are another organelle. Now I'm gonna make a little note about this organelle because we do have ribosomes in prokaryotes. They, a ribosome is not a membrane bound organelle. But ribosomes build proteins. And we find them all over. They take information from the DNA and build, use it to build proteins. Let's look, where is the DNA? I'm just gonna circle this right here. This is my nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by cell membrane. It's called the nuclear envelope. And it contains all the DNA. You see this other guy in here, this guy right here? That's the nucleolus. And the nucleolus um, actually builds ribosomes. That's cool. So the nucleus contains your DNA and it has the nucleolus who's building these ribosomes that are floating around. You notice that the ribosomes are on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They're also just chilling out here. Do you see them? There's little tiny dots out here. Those are all ribosomes. So the ribosomes can either be associated with the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then they play a role in protein function, like protein, like the, oh my gosh, I've got this great visual of a ribosome producing a protein and like pooping the protein into the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then the rough endoplasmic reticulum like bends the protein and like folds it up and, and does some tweaks to it so that it goes out and is functional. Remember, proteins are strings of amino acids, and they um, they basically are the machines of your cell. Like they do all the work, and they provide all the structure almost entirely um, in your body. So, protein shape um, and sequence of amino acids is really, really, really important. So, thank you, ribosomes, for doing that work. Rough endoplasmic reticulum will often um, communicate to send um, their products to another structure called the Golgi apparatus right here. That's this thing. Does apparatus have one P or two? I think it has two, but I'm not positive, so I'll leave it like this. The Golgi apparatus um, actually will take those proteins and like fold them up and modify them even more and package them into little vesicles. The, again, a membrane bound thing, 
This little bubble, all these bubbles are vesicles. And cells can put stuff inside the vesicles. And then in the next lecture, we'll talk about how vesicle contents can be barfed out into the environment for the rest of the body to use. Notice that here's another, it looks like a little vesicle. Um, there are vesicles, there are vesicles called lysosomes. I'm just going to pretend like that is one. I can't tell. But lysosomes are filled with digestive enzymes. So that's an example. Um, you can use, put stuff in there and then break it apart and digest it. Um, let's see what else is in here that is interesting. I'm going to go ahead and name uh, these things. Let's see, I need a pink. The, these lines, do you see these lines right here? There's like a bunch of them all around. This is cytoskeleton. And cytoskeleton, um, there's all sorts of forms of cytoskeleton that can just be inside a cell helping provide structure. It can be outside a cell. Those, remember the cilia that we saw all around, all the hairs on the single celled critters that we looked at in the beginning? Those little hairs are made out of cytoskeleton. Flagella, like sperm tails, are made of cytoskeleton. And a lot of movement happens because of these cytoskeletal, um, whatever, uh, structures. Okay, I think that I don't see anything else in there that I want to label right now, but let's go look at a plant cell and see. Now you keep your this open and we'll go look at a plant cell and see if we can um, see if there's anything different in a plant cell.